Welcome to the Transform Your Relationship show. Good morning here in the, on the Pacific side of the U.S. It is the morning. Good afternoon to those of you who are elsewhere. Good tomorrow if you're in that region. <laughs> I'm Laura Rubenstein and I'm here with the awesome and fabulous Dr. Roberta Shaler. Hi, Roberta. Hi, Laura, and good morning to everybody. I hope your new year is proceeding in wonderful ways. Yes, me too. And we have a great topic today, as usual. Um, we're talking about sabotage, sabotaging our success. People talk about it all the time, but what we don't often think about is something we're going to talk about is how does our early life actually impact our ability to succeed in our adult years? So why is it important to look at the early life, Roberta? Well, for so many of us, well, not so many of us, all of us, we don't have any memory you know, of the first year of our life. It's all sensory memory and we don't pull it up. We can't make a visual picture of it. And sometimes that may be as long as three years old before you have your first memory. So there was a lot of things that got installed. You know, if you think of, of your life as a program, there was programming being installed there were a few viruses there were worm or two you know little malware and we have to be aware of that using that metaphor that when it was installed then we have no idea that it's driving some of the things that we think are just us and the way we are and i w just thought we would be a really good idea to have a look at particularly five little messages that may be you know worming their way into sabotaging your success. Oh, I love that we have five to go through here because <laughs> it's, it, you, you know, you always have a sense if, or I do, I have a sense that when things are um, not going in a certain way, I'm like, how am I causing this? What am I doing? What is this pattern? If I'm seeing a pattern, I'm guessing that there's something causing it that I'm unaware of. So enlighten us to these five areas. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and you're right. And what I want to be really clear about for all of us is it's not about blame. It's about discovery. Like It's not that we should have done better with this or if we had it right, we wouldn't be suffering this way. These things happen to us without our knowledge. This programming got installed. And the earliest, if today is the earliest, the earliest that we can see it, then we can do something about it. Until then, we can't. So this is all just for your enrichment. It's not about blame. So please don't go there. So if you had a difficult parent or you had a parent who was unloving or maybe a little neglectful or maybe didn't really want to be a parent or was having some difficulties with substance or alcohol abuse or whatever, this is going to be much more obvious. But people with emotional deficits also raising children will put these things into you. So the first one is that maybe deep down, and I'm going to invite everybody to sit with and reflect on these things because it's not a quick, oh yeah, that happened to me. It may take a little more thought. But the first one is that you may not believe that anyone can really love you. And you know, certainly the surface, the top of the head, this says, oh, well, of course, you know, I, I'm lovable because that's the right answer. But it's that sitting in the silence and finding out, do I really believe someone can love me? Because even when people say they do and they'll cross rings of fire to prove it, if you have that in your your unconscious programming, your subconscious programming, you're going to be suspect of everybody. You're not really going to believe that they can love you. Does that have any resonance? Well, yeah, you know, I, I out of all the work I've done and kind of in, introspection, I always have, I feel like uh, I have an unanswerable question when I'm in a relationship is, am I lovable? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't think there was a parent that meaningful, you know, purposefully put that in me. Um or how I got that, it also might be a cultural thing because mm -hmm. uh, I find a lot of people have kind of this worthy, there's a combination of not feeling good enough and not feeling lovable. Mm -hmm. That it always seems to the, be the ca core um, thoughts. I don't know if anybody else can relate to this, but that mm -hmm. <laughs> we come back to, I see it in my hypnosis clients over and over again. And having the awareness is really powerful. I, we can do something about it. But 
I can that yes, it's always it always seems to be there or come back to that when I'm in my lowest states of, you know, feeling bad about myself or something. Yeah, and I think it's very common. I think, you know, everybody is thinking that they may be, oh, really, I didn't know anybody knew that about me. It's very, very common. And it's not like someone did it on purpose to us. They were doing the best they could. They did what they know to do. They did what they could do from their own level of emotional development. So it's not about looking for blame for yourself or your parents or anybody else. It's just right now as an adult looking in and saying, do I have a deep down feeling that maybe I don't believe anybody can love me? And, you know, <clears throat> that helps you develop a real tough exterior and the problem is that that tough exterior then prevents you from having emotional intimacy. So that's number one. And number two is that deep down again, you don't trust anyone even when you want to. Like if nobody, if I don't believe anybody really loves me, then how can I really believe and trust anybody? Now, for myself, I've, I was abused and I was from a hijackal family. I had a lot of, a lot of issues from my family. <laughs> and, you know, I, that was something that I really had to work on because you start second guessing yourself all the time. Am I making a mistake? Um, it, can I really trust somebody? Would it be wise to trust somebody? They seem to be telling me the truth, but should I believe them? You know, so you start second guessing everybody because you don't want to be falling into a pit, you know? <laughs> so did they lie to me? Um, have they always lied to me? Am I stupid? Am I believing people who lie to me? And you ask yourself all these questions because way back there, you learned that you couldn't trust the giants, you know, those people that when you were little that you had to trust to keep you alive. And, and you learned that maybe they weren't so trustworthy and it, it's just become part of your fabric. And for us to be able to see that now and say, you know, I really have to calibrate that. How do I know when I can trust someone now as an adult? Oh, that's, challenging if you've never had the experience of trusting someone having somebody to trust and plus i would see again if if you're feeling like you have this tough exterior that's probably underneath it not trusting anyone mm -hmm. because the only person that you can trust is yourself and you're not so sure about that sometimes but you know at least you know what's going on within you so you you trust that level but if you want emotional intimacy and who doesn't I mean, there are very few people who want to be a recluse and have no people in their life who really know who they are and have their best interest at heart. But if you've had uh, alienating experiences in your early life that allow you to have that question, can I trust anybody? Um, <clears throat> you just can't have the intimacy that you want. And, and you'll second guess all the time. Like when the person doesn't call when they're supposed to call or they you know, um, what would be a good example in the digital world? Oh, they said they were going to bed early and then you go on Facebook and find that they were posting late at night and you're like, can I trust them? <laughs> it sounds like a whole show topic in and of itself, how to trust people, how to know how to trust people. We could circle back on this again. Huge, 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 huge. Because if we can't trust other people, and we can't trust ourselves to know when we can trust other people. We have such a compounded problem <laughs> that it's really worth figuring it out. Yeah. Huge topic. Okay. So that's number two. Yeah. Number three is that you will have trouble with intimacy. And I mean that real intimacy where you feel close and cherished and known and respected and you can relax because you're feeling safe. And you know, I was I was talking about, in fact, I did a Facebook Live on this the other day, that we have, in order to be safe, we have to have boundaries. And when, when we don't have boundaries, our intimacy levels become very suspect. And we question ourselves a lot. So to be able to have um, a relationship where you can let someone in and be vulnerable is 
what you want. However, if you've been with hijackals, those toxic, difficult, and disturbing people in life, or you were raised by them, that's a real question for you. So in order to um, have intimacy at all, you have to be able to open yourself. And if you happen to attract another hijackal in your life, what happens is that you become vulnerable and you think that you're going to share something with your hijackal partner or your difficult partner or whomever you have. And you think it's safe and you wait for those wonderful moments where you feel you're really close and, and together and bonded and everything. And then you share something with them. Maybe something simple like, you know, I don't think I've ever gotten over my fear of the dark. And your partner says, oh, honey, that's too bad. You know, when did that start? They may ask some questions. But if you're with a very difficult person, what they do with your vulnerabilities is they weaponize them. So you'll be in a completely different setting somewhere. And preferably, if it's a hijackal, you'll be with other people. And they'll say, well, how could we trust you with that? You're even afraid of the dark. And they'll just weaponize and expose your intimacies. So it becomes very, very difficult to feel that you can be intimate and allow someone to get close and really be able to be vulnerable with them. So you become quite wary. Yeah. Or you keep stepping into that trap over and over again and thinking it's you. Right. Right. And like right. Something is really wrong. And that affirms that that first belief, like, I, how could somebody love me? Yeah, I'm, something's obviously wrong with me. Right. So it can become a vicious cycle. Yeah. And of course, obviously, just as you're pointing out, Laura, all these things are intimately related, because if you don't believe you can be loved and you don't believe you can trust anyone, how are you possibly going to allow for intimacy? And that's what you're longing for. So you've got to set up right there that you're longing for intimacy and you're afraid of intimacy. That's an awful place to be, right? And, you know, my Facebook groups um, for people who are with these hijackals, they often say, like, when do I learn to trust again? How do I learn? What? I'm afraid to go on a date. Can I, can I trust anything another human being says? And that's why I have my recovery programs, because you have to redo your whole mindset around what's possible and recalibrate that there are healthier people in the world than the ones you've been with or were raised by. And this is how they behave. Mm. You know, it, it's difficult and it's sad, but it's doable. And that's the, that's the hope that I want to bring this morning to our conversation is the reason I want to bring out these ideas and that you were willing to talk with me about this this morning is because these could be like way down under the deepest spaces in your foundation. And they're putting up weeds all the time and you don't notice how it's cracking you. Hmm. And so it's important to spend some time, some quiet time and say, are these things true for me? And if they are, just know that getting help is what you need because don't go on another moment with those kinds of feelings that are, make you feel inadequate, make you feel unsafe, um, not, not necessary. And you need to get your chooser in better order or your picker in better order <laughs> so that you can be with other people who won't treat you poorly. And I too want to give hope. Um, first of all, you have a great website for relationship help that has blogs. It has, you know, things they can sign up for, they can, which will tell them how they can get access to that Facebook group you talked about. Um, you have your book, hijackles.com. You, we're, there are tons of resources, so you don't have to go it alone. And that's what I love about once you're here, if you, you know there's something you want to shift, don't you don't have to do it alone. And I was one who had a picker that was off, <laughs> not necessarily because of a hijackal background, but because of whatever programming I got in early life and, sure. and made it mean and culturally or whatever um, went. But um it is process. It is a process, and there's practices that you can build, like the muscle up of of health, healthy muscles. I guess I don't know what to call, call them. Of inner interpersonal 
I like to, I don't know if that's a real world word, but I use it, <laughs> interpersonal relationship with yourself to grow that. And um, it's step by step. So, so, you know, it, it's not going to happen like a light switch and that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't get here like a light switch, um, but it's a beautiful journey. <laughs> well, it really- is. Because you really feel your own power. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we've gone, what, through three, four, three of your telltale signs of, you know, has your early life impacted your, your success. And um, as you come become aware, it is very powerful. We have choices. Yeah, it is. And you brought up an important thing. You know, I talk about hijackals all the time, but, you know, maybe you had preoccupied parents or maybe you you had parents who both had to work in order to put food on the table or whatever happened to you. It's not about, you know, that it was it was about the blame. Like I said earlier, it's about acknowledgement, like, OK, I have that deep inside me. It doesn't matter where it came from. You don't have to spend hours figuring that out. In fact, often with my clients, you know, we touch on it, but it doesn't matter. It's here now. We've got to decide and choose differently and move forward. Um, But they're worth thinking about because they will sabotage your success. Your success about how you feel about yourself, about other people, about the things you take on in life, the ability that you have to dream at a size, maybe a size larger than you are right now, and you may think it's unattainable. But if you don't feel like anybody can love you, do you think they're going to love your ideas? Well, no, you know, that could be something that limits you. And it's really worth looking at these five things. Okay, so give us number four. Number four is you seldom feel safe. And have you ever had that feeling of walking into a networking meeting and (laughs) there's a part of you that doesn't want to go? Like, I've got to expose myself. I've got to endeavor to bring myself to this. And instead of instead of being interested in the other people, your inner conversation is about what will they think of me? Or I have well, to put on a whole persona or, yeah, you know, to fit into this group. Yeah. And, and what do they want? And it's the same thing when you write a dating profile online. You know, if... And and I tell, I've worked with some people who wanted to do that. And I say, you know, write what you want, not what you think other people are looking for. And that's a basic mistake people make is instead of saying, I have the right to say what I want, as opposed to trying to please somebody else and capture their interest by being who they want me to be. Whether that's a dating profile or walking into a networking meeting or the way that you walk around every day, that is a problem for you because it comes from lack of safety of being with yourself. And you want to be comfortable in you. You know, on my radio show, The Relationship Help Show last week, my guest was talking about um, how having left a hijackal relationship how it took her a long time to actually become 100% comfortable loving herself and loving being with herself. That she felt a real need to be comfortable with that before she proceeded in any way. And I think that that's a wise, wise thing to do because if you haven't had that deep safety within yourself, with yourself, and you go looking for it out there, you're not going to find it because you're taking that lack of safety with you. Wow, that's huge. Being able to acknowledge that, to do that, to feel safe with yourself and yeah. to, that before you step out there. And the advice you gave about the dating profile and how to approach anything really is be connected to yourself and what do you want, not how do I pretzel myself to be what they are looking for? I love that. If anybody else is here can relate to that, want to chime in and, you know, say here, here, like us, um, do that. I'm going to monitor the comments too, if you have questions. So we're here, you may be watching this at different places, but if you want to comment and have me see your comment in real time, I'm monitoring at facebook.com slash transform your relationships live transfer. Oh, no. Yes. Transform your relationships live. And that's what we do here, right? We are here about helping 
looking inward so that we can transform transform what's out in our life and have the results we want. And these are four of the five great tips on knowing what could impact your success and what may be sabotaging. So <clears throat> we go to number five. Yeah, it's a big one. <coughs> Excuse me. Welcome to California flu. Um, <laughs> number five is a big one because you may find that you are starved. Now, you've got to hear both parts of this. You are starved for approval. And you are starved for approval that you can believe and accept. So it's not just the approval, but it's getting yourself to believe that that person actually, you can trust that person is telling you the truth. <laughs> and so that, that's a really big thing because when you're with a difficult person or you're raised by a difficult person, everything is a competition because they have to win. So they're not going to approve of you. They're never going to tell you you did a good job. They're going to look at your faults. You know, the old thing about you bring home a report card that's all A pluses and you have one A. A hijackal parent says, what happened there to that one A? What's wrong with you? Not you've got six A pluses. And in that you internalize that. And so what difficult people do or insecure people do is they withhold approval. It's like the, that carrot thing, you know, keep going, keep going. Eventually, you think you'll get the approval. Well, you won't. And so if you have internalized that and you are really starved for approval, the place to start is by taking stock and coming to approve of yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's not easy. A, it means you've got to spend time by yourself. And many people are rushing around doing anything to avoid spending time by themselves. And secondly, you have to be willing to say, I like that about myself. I'm happy with that about myself. Or in this piece, you know, I don't care for that. Here's what I would prefer. And then you make those changes. But start by approving of yourself. And that is so simple to say and so not easy to do for many, many people. You know, my mother used to say to me that she can't say anything good about me because I get a swelled head. Wow. Oh, okay. Um, can you imagine what not ever saying anything good about me did to my head? You know, if it swelled when you said it, did it shrink when you don't? <laughs> well, certainly the sense of who I am shrank. And that could have happened to a lot of people. And, you know, there is another one, Laura, that I'll, I'll just throw in here, even though we're giving five. Here's a bonus. Um, okay. If you, and this is for people who have been with a hijackal parent and you know, somebody who is very difficult and having some trouble and they're crazy making and they've got some personality traits that are not healthy, but you will be constantly invalidated by a hijackal parent. They will always tell you you're not good enough. They'll always be looking for the fault. They'll always be blaming you for everything. And they'll always be in competition with you. So whether you had a hijackal parent or not, or you just had somebody who was very insecure or maybe a little bit absent or neglectful or whatever, these are the messages that you would have received or could have received. And my invitation in bringing them to our people today, Laura, is just to say, have a look. Could these, well, now six things have been part of your makeup and it's been that way so long that you don't really realize how deeply held these are and how they're making their way through and causing the sabotage that we spoke about at the beginning. These are really golden nuggets and it's a step-by-step -step process. I really like your advice in number five about start approving of yourself and like you said, it's it's not always easy. It's simple, but it's not always easy. So find something really benign you can approve of. You know, is there yeah. something? Well, <laughs> you, you like could, the color of your eyes. Exactly. Start by looking in the mirror and focus not on what you don't like, but on what you do. <laughs> you know? And that is a practice. I mean, yeah. And, and one of the things that in hypnosis, I encourage clients to do um, and give them kind of this uh, post hypnotic suggestion to which is what I'm giving you right now is when you catch yourself thinking something disapproving of yourself, see how quickly you can turn your thought to something that you can approve. 
like even if you're asking just ask yourself a, a question well is there something i can approve of myself of right now oh yeah my eyes i like my eyes they're clear and they're they work <laughs> you know <laughs> i see <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's such good advice because it, that's how we change things, the tiny little changes that we choose. Like this is habitual, I choose that. And it may be just a six degree move in another direction, but I am powerful and I can choose to make that six degree turn. I may have to practice a little bit and I may have to forgive myself for falling back a few times, but I'm moving forward. You know, I call that the self-improvement samba, two steps forward, one step back. You know? <laughs> I like um, to think of a little baby uh, learning to walk. It's like you don't know how to do this stuff yet. You don't know how to walk yet in this approval and, and self-love. And I'm just trying to look back at the in the believing and trusting arena. This is all things we haven't learned yet. Uh, we learned the opposite. So we have to unlearn and then relearn. And so think about a baby when they've never walked before, right? They see these mm -hmm. giants walking. So there's role models and that's, that's very helpful. Plus their bodies are growing and they're getting muscles. We have to get muscles too. But when that baby, you know, is trying to get up and plops right back down because doesn't have the muscle or the know-how or balance yet you don't say stupid baby you know <laughs> that's you, right why you, why you'll never you walk you just stay down there <laughs> why you say good job just for trying just for thinking just for being you know moving. wanting to and having wanting it, to yes. having it in your consciousness that it could be different <laughs> I could be an upright thing on two legs. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, it's so much fun. Yeah. So if we could play with ourselves through this process, it makes it way more um, fun. It makes it more inviting, enticing to do. Um, so uh, it doesn't have to be so serious is, is what I'm saying. It is very serious. But at the same time, I know for me, I'm much more likely to, to do something and to grow myself if I can make it fun, lighter, and at least trick myself into thinking it's, or have a perspective, and trick is not a great word, but have a perspective that, hey, I can do this. It's not going to be like trudging through mud on a cold day, you know, <laughs> it's going to yeah. be more like skipping in the park and twirling around and stumbling maybe and laughing at that and whatever. So Mm -hmm. I like and to think that. about life as being fraught with possibilities. You know, mm -hmm. it could be different. I could think about it differently. It is a possibility. And until you make it a, an actuality, it's a great mindset to think, well, I could do that. And that's what I'd like to move towards. So let me take one step towards that. And your baby image is great because you may only get one step today. <laughs> And you're going to wobble a bunch and you might fall back down on that poopy diaper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's okay. It's just what it is. You know, it's like, what are you going to do? You're going to be a baby. Right. You're going to learn to walk. It's going to be good. There's, there's just, if you can have that innocence and curiosity, um, I'd like to leave our, our time here on that. And because, you know, there's so much we've been through and, but there's so much freedom and success awaiting. And now that we have awareness we can do something about it. So. That's right. It's all about awareness and opening your mind to, oh, maybe this is something I could think about and it has some meaning for me. And that's why we brought you these five that turned into six things today. <laughs> so we wish you a successful week, um, a positive week filled with possibilities. If you have questions, you can go to fourrelationshiphelp.com for Dr. Roberta's awesome wisdom. You can go to transformtoday.com for to reach me for anything hypnosis or marketing. Um, these, like you said, go into a networking meeting and preparing yourself. You have to have the mindset that's empowering to attract success. So let's get you there, and then we'll grow your brand from there. <laughs> Yeah, and, that, and have that brand be something that starts with, here's who I am, and I know I chose this person. I am not on autopilot. I'm not running on old programming. I've brought up these questions. I've sat with them, and now I know, yeah, you know, I'm afraid that I can't even believe it when I do get approval. Okay, if I understand that, then let's take that apart 
And wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to take in when someone says, wow, you do that really well and you resonated completely with, yes, I do. Thank you for the validation, (laughs) right? Instead of saying, well, if you really knew who I am, you wouldn't say that. Yeah, (laughs) I love it. All right. We will be back in two weeks with our next show um, as we head into this new year. So thanks for being with us. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Talk soon.